already, right? It's the end of the world. Every time I read that, I know this is going to date me a little bit, but I don't care. I think it's the end of the world, and you know it. All right. Of course, there's not many extras here, so you do what you got to do. But uh, we would love to have you if you're an Xer, a zennial, a millennial, a boomer, a buster, or you're just here and you're human. We're glad you came. We believe the end of the world is coming. And it feels like it's right around the corner, doesn't it? I want you to understand something greater. That we really do not have to be concerned about the end of the world. But we're not the first ones to ponder that. But if you're here and you believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, if you believe that he is the risen king, the very thing that we just sang, as Sean said, they sang the gospel, the very thing that we just sang, if you believe that, guess what? You don't have to worry about the end of the world. You don't have to worry. And some of you are thinking like, are you serious? Do you know what's going on? Yeah, I, I totally understand. And so over the next few weeks, we're going to give you a reason why you don't have to worry about the end of the world. And the primary reason you don't have to worry about the end of the world is because those who know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord know the one who's coming back. And we know that he wins. And if he wins, he's already told us, if he wins, we win. Can you say that with me? We win. One more time. We win. We have Matthew, which is the first book of the New Testament. And Matthew chapter 24 is found on page 879 of the one in your pew back. Now, just to give you some context to where we're at, Jesus is in the midst of teaching. And he's in the midst of teaching, and he's just gone through a really difficult time in which his teaching was confronting the leaders of the local church, the synagogue, the temple, the Jewish place of worship. He was confronting all of the, the lawyers and the, the, the people who thought that they knew what God really wanted. He was, he was confronting all of the local rabbis and teachers, and he, he kind of really, really puts it to them in a harsh way. And the last thing he says, the, the last thing he basically says is, all of you are a bunch of criminals, and God doesn't want anything to do with you. Now, he was ready to be assaulted. And in fact, they wanted to kill him at that point. And, and those of you who know the rest of the story, you know that he continually goes up to. And in fact, if you look at verse chapter 23, verse 33, I, I love it. It says, snakes, brood of vipers, how can you escape from being condemned to hell? You want to get a pastor really, you know, fired up, tell him he's going to hell, right? And that's what he did. And, and, and this is what he does. And, and Jesus Christ speaks this way. And then, and then he, 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 best, he basically says that, that the, the, this temple, that this place that you worship, this place that you see as the Holy Grail, it's eventually, it's not going to exist. And everything that you hold sacred is not going to be there. And in fact, the very thing that you think is most important, that you think your religion, your, your, your love, your faith, everything you believe is right there, it's not going to exist. It's not going to be there. And guess what? Mic drop and he walks off. I, I don't know about you, but that's some moxie. That's some serious, serious, like, oh my goodness. You know, a lot of times we have this painted picture of Jesus still uh, of that like, you know, 15th century Renaissance where he, he's this meek and mild. And I believe our Jesus is the meek and mild lamb who came without a word and went to the cross and bore the wrath of God. And he's peaceful. At the same time, our God is a fierce protector of what God desires. And Jesus was a champion of championing the message of God himself. Remember, he, would, he talked about it at Christmas time. He's the revelation, the fullness of God's glory given to us so that we can know him. And when it came to people assaulting and disturbing the word of God, he wanted to get that straight. The truth of the matter is, the longer I'm a Christian and the more I look at the world and I see the difference between the world and what God says, I feel like the Lord's coming back. Paul thought that. Everybody thought that. In fact, that's the nature of who we are because Jesus has, has given us something, his Holy Spirit, and his Holy Spirit is longing, as Paul says, it's longing, it's desiring to go back to the creator. And so there's a part of us 
that, that doesn't need just to ponder, but needs to agree with what the Holy Spirit's doing in us, and that's to desire heaven more than we desire the world. I know that's hard, but that's the intention of it. But when we ponder, this should not lead us to be consumed by worry or doubt or struggle. It should not lead us. In fact, in fact, the, the signs and the times, and, and we see that, and that's what Jesus moves them to because they're, they're getting that, right? They're, they're getting this message. And, and if you look at verse 4 again of chapter 24, we'll look at it. It says, Jesus replied to them, Watch out that no one deceives you. You see, here they are like, oh man, the end of the world's coming. Oh man, we're looking at this. And man, have you heard what this guy said? And did you know this prophet? And you just said, Jesus, you just said the temple's not going to be here. Everything's going to be torn down. All these people that we think are the leaders. You know? And Jesus says, be careful. Watch out that no one deceives you. Verse five, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Messiah. And they will deceive many. You are going to hear of wars and rumors of wars so that you are not alarmed because these things must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places, and these events are the beginning of labor pains. Verse 9. Then they will hand you over to be persecuted, and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. Verse 10. Then many will fall away, betray one another, and hate one another. Many false prophets will rise up and deceive many because lawlessness will multiply. The love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. This good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed in all the world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. And I think what I want to help you understand, church, especially as you watch the news and you start to get fearful, I want you to understand this, this very, the very first thing here is, is don't be deceived. Don't be deceived. All of these things, again, are just like the labor pains. It's not the actual labor. They all be deceived that, that, that we are entrusted, like Bill Bright was entrusted, to bring the word of God to the world because we have a commandment that calls us to bring the God, the whole world, God, and his message. That's the commandment. That's why we do whatever it takes. That's why we take all funds that we are given and we help to foster the kingdom of God. That's why we want you to be a giver. This year in 2024, we want you to give more than you've ever given to the church and to the work of God because we believe that the obeying the first commandment that Jesus gave us, this idea of go into all the world and tell the gospel, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We believe that that is the mission of the church and we're gonna do it. What I don't believe is that I am going to bring about, and you are going to bring about, God coming faster. God's coming when he wants to come. Jesus is coming when he wants to come. In fact, Jesus even declares, Jesus communicates that he doesn't even know he's going to come in obedience to the Father. And you know what? We are going to work in obedience to the Father till He comes. Because that's our job. That we're going to be obedient to the Father. And we're going to do whatever it called, and we're going to take all the opportunity to do that. But I will tell you, it doesn't change the fact that I'd like Him to come sooner than later. That's an okay feeling. But don't be deceived. There are so many church members over the years that I've had opportunity to meet with. They'll come and they'll go, hey, pastor, I got this pamphlet or, or I got this book or I, I saw this preacher late night when I couldn't sleep and, and he was telling me all this stuff. And so I bought his five keys to surviving the tribulation. Foolishness. Don't believe it. I'm speaking very clearly because there has been a whole lot of people in the church that have given their money over to charlatans and people that think, let me be clear to you, Jesus makes clear to the disciples right here, the end will come. Our job is to be obedient. And all these things that you see, don't be consumed by those. I love here, Jesus 
talking to our generation, watch out in verse four that no one deceives you. What you can be sure of and what you need to be sure of is this first one. At the end of the age, be sure of your salvation and your doctrine. Be sure of your salvation. If the end of the world is coming, be ready. The only way to be ready is to believe in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. It's the only way. Be sure of your doctrine. Be sure of your doctrine. No one's, people are gonna deceive you because you're not certain of what God says. You are gonna be persuaded because your ears are fancied and, and connected to the world. Instead, fix your eyes on the truth of God and you will not be deceived and I will not be deceived. Doctrine, what is doctrine? Doctrine is the human understanding, the human language that we give to the truth of scripture. And there are all types of churches that believe in different things. We, we subscribe to a doctrine that has been in existence for a long time, and we believe it's a, a biblically inerrant uh, message, a, a message that, that comes straight from the scriptures, but we even start messing it up sometimes. That's why we always want to say, fact check, truth check, go back to what this Bible says. But here's the truth. When we see this stuff and it's the end of the world, here's what we do. We go to the place where we know we can get help and that should drive us to our knees to proclaim the message of God. It should drive us and it needs to drive us to complete the mission of God. Because the truth of the matter is, if the end of the world is coming and it's coming tomorrow, I've got family and I've got friends that don't know Jesus is the savior of the world. And when he comes back, or when they meet their end, if they're not prepared, they go to hell. There is no hope after death if you don't have Jesus as your savior. There's no hope for Hamas. There's no hope for Israel. There's no hope for the Burmese. There's no hope for any of these people that are at war if you meet death and you don't meet the savior first. And so church, we aren't alarmed to helplessness. We are aware to faithfulness. And we push harder into the Great Commission. Last, this is huge. Prepare for persecution and relational turmoil. Prepare for, for persecution. In, in fact, verse 9, I, I read it and I stopped. I want you to see it again. Then they, verse 24, I mean, uh, verse 9 of chapter 24, then they will hand you over to be persecuted and they will kill you. You will be hated by all nations because of my name. And then some of you will fall away. People fall away from the faith because they're not prepared for persecution. I face more persecution for being a Christian in my beliefs than my family did. You know what I'm also finding is serving alongside Derek and, and these other student leaders that we have, that these students are being persecuted more for their beliefs in Christianity than I was ever. Do you know how hard it is to believe that God created male and female right now? You think you have a hard time believing it? You wait till you go to a class and the teacher tells you that you can call them they. And you stand up and you say, I love you in the name of Jesus, but that's not what I believe. When you stand up and you say the truth of God today, the truth of God is the truth, whether you like it or not. And they look at you and go, well, that's not my truth. The school system right now, our legislation system, everything in America is making it harder and harder for those who believe what Jesus has said to proclaim it. And yet, those under 20 are coming to Christ at a faster rate than they did when I was 20. Because even though there is a soupy mess out in the world, the truth is that people still need Jesus. And these students, these middle school and high school students, my, my children, the elementary school students right now, they are going to be persecuted for their faith harder than any of us have. Are we preparing them to be persecuted? Are you prepared for persecution? 
when your son or your daughter or your, your, your nephew or our niece comes to you and, and, and says, hey, you know, this is happening in school. What do you say? Oh, just don't say anything. You know, it's, just, it's okay. You don't have to believe that. Or are we confident in the word of God and are we going back to believing this is what Jesus said and we are going to believe it? And yes, the world doesn't agree with it, but we are going to believe it and we're going to live it because we are the light of the world. We are the, we are the church. We are the, we are the lamp up on, on the post so that all the world can see the message of Jesus Christ. He has given us that. He has indwelled us with his Holy Spirit and given us his truth so we can communicate the truth of God to the world. And when we do that, we're going to be persecuted. Are we ready? Most of us shy away from persecution at the office, at the workplace. Uh, we just rather, and we have an America, it's easy to be undercover Christian here. But the truth of the matter is, the only ones who win the prize are the ones who endure persecution. 